Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, and today I'm going to continue on my series where I'm building up a space scene, and in the first video we set up the scene with some spaceships when we were flying around. In the second video we started adding lasers and shooting those lasers, and in this video we're optimizing some of our performance with those lasers because we are using projectiles, we want to create an object pool. And to keep it simple, an object pool is simply a, an, an object that manages other objects within itself. Uh, so in this case, we're going to manage our laser shots. If we fire 10 shots, as we need them, we take them from the object pool. And as we no longer need them, they go back into the object pool. And I'm going to demonstrate that really quickly. So we'll click play here and over on the scene hierarchy you can see we have all these projectiles and in our projectile pool and I'm gonna go ahead and just start firing and you can see that some of these start turning active as I fire and then as they deactivate they go back to being gray and you can also see that they're cycling through so when I fire I create a new projectile it has its own life and once its life is ended it disables itself but in reality it's going back into the projectile pool. So before I really go into the code I want to explain something that caused me some confusion when researching this um, because it wasn't very clear to me but I realized it doesn't necessarily have to be but these are some things that you should understand and some takeaways I think that really matter so we'll just jump into that and the topic I want to talk about is the singleton. So in Unity, a singleton is basically an object that instantiates itself and can exist outside of a scene. And what that really means is we have a class that we want to run some code, but it needs to be an object, but it's not really an object. So let's say we don't have like a fighter jet, right? It's just a piece of code that needs to manage something. And the reason why we need to instantiate it or we need to make an object is because there are mono behaviors that we need. Um, so that's not to say that we can't get what we need without those mono behaviors, but generally speaking, it's very easy if we have something that works that manages objects to use an object with all the APIs that get associated with the mono behavior. So if we have a game object, and we want to work with that game object, it's best to have a mono behavior. And to, in order to do that, in order to work with another game object, we need the mono behavior as an object. But singletons are generally considered bad programming practice. And the reason why is because, I mean, effectively, they can control themselves. They are instance, you know, they're instantiating themselves. And, and that's not necessarily good. They're considered a global. Um, when we say they can exist outside of a scene, you know, if you created a bunch of uh, singletons and you didn't realize you were doing it, um, that, you know, basically you have something just sitting out there that nothing, nothing is parenting except for the app itself. So, you know, the only way they shut down is when the app shuts down. Um, but at the end of this, the best way to implement an object pool in Unity is to use a singleton. So just because it might be considered bad practice for several reasons and several good reasons, um, it's a tool and it's a tool that works and implementing something else could be done, but it isn't worth it. So we're going to go ahead and proceed that route. And so for my last video, um, what, I, what I had put in place was a laser emitter, which emits a laser and it has a script and a projectile that gets emitted from the laser emitter and this also has a script so we're going to jump into uh, the scripting on this but really just remember laser emitter projectile that gets shot from the laser emitter and now a projectile pool so let's take a look at the scripts our projectile pool is a mono behavior and we have a public game object prefab and in this case the prefab is the projectile. Um, we create a private queue. 
and a queue is it has a generic it takes it's um, which we put in a game object and if you don't know what a generic is these little brackets here mean that the queue can be a queue of like a float or an int in this case we've selected game object so we're a, a generic just means that we can put something in there and and once we've clear you know declared that that's what that will take now so it's not if you say private queue game object object pool this object pool will not take integers now if we had declared it it could but we said it's going to take game objects so our object pool is a new queue so we instantiate that and then the singleton this is the part that really this is where we're saying this is a singleton um, the public static and and by the way this is a pseudo singleton because this is not fully singleton just because we do this this is just we are basically saying instantiate yourself create an instance of yourself um, and um, actually we're not even really doing that this is just saying we can instantiate ourselves then on awake we create the instance and we say this is our instance so um, and then we also say grow pool and the grow pool um, is to set the projectiles that we want to use so we have some of those sitting out there then uh, we have a public game object get from pool so this is our method that says we are going to pull something from the pool if we have zero we need to grow the pool again um, and then our instance we want our object pool we're going to DQ so what that means is we are pulling an object from the queue and we're also setting that instance active and so we're going to return the instance of the object uh, for, from this method so we call this get from pool we're gonna get the object that we're calling then we have our void grow pool and it which is private this is where we're actually adding objects to the pool so we're adding the instance of this prefab um, and when we say what we're doing here is actually we're we're kind of pre instantiating uh, we're kind of just saying we're gonna add new instances to the pool that does not mean that we are uh, taking it from the pool or doing anything like that. We're actually creating instances in the pool. So every time we do this, you'll see 10 objects appear in the pool. Um, and then we'll add another 10 objects if it needs to grow. And wh where this would occur is if we were to say we have 10, ob we start out with 10 and we get to, we call 11 and we don't have any left queued, then we'll add another 10. We'll instantiate them and then we'll draw them out. Now, when that happens, there might be a slight delay as they're instantiated, uh, but it shouldn't be major. And it's still, you know, it's not like it's going to be a big deal to instantiate once you already have 10. Um, and in our case, we're not going to because the fire rate and the destruction rate is is you know at five basically, and we have 10. So, um, and then the last function is public void add to pool. And so what we're doing here is we are saying we're going to give back this instance we're going to make it no no longer active and then we're going to put it back in the queue so what we had to do to use the pool is in our fire laser script change a few things so the last time we showed you the video we had this fire laser function so when we got our input to fire and we were you know capable of firing uh, we were setting our time and then we were saying fire laser and fire laser actually instantiated the object so we were saying game object laser game object instantiate um, this time um, we actually want to change that to spawn laser from pool so we're actually taking a pooled object and so we're saying here very laser equals projectile pool the instance here dot instance get from pool and then uh, we are putting that object from our basically our emitter so when we say fire laser the position of the emitter the position and the rotation that's where we're putting that object at so we are saying create this pull this object from the pool and put it right in front of the laser now the laser beam also had to be updated um, and the reason why was because I had on start I think on start oh only on start this section here I had to say void on enable um, because what was happening was um, basically when we have Genesis um, if if our projectile 
lives for longer than three seconds, then it needs to be destroyed. So the genesis is the time it was created. Well, the problem is um, we created on start, but then start is if we enable it and disable it, there's no new start time. So we've got a problem. Every time I was shooting the laser, it was immediately disappearing um, and going back into the pool queue because the genesis was greater than three. I mean, it, it's, its age was greater than three, and that's the amount of time that we let it live. So I had to say on enable. When we enable it again, we reset that time. So I left this here because when it starts, it still needs to be set as well. Um, but on enable, uh, time dot time, and that's pretty much it. Oh well, except here. Um, instead of I was I had an ob I was destroying the object here. Instead now we're saying projectile pool dot instance add to pool and the game object and that is going back into the pool. Um, otherwise, um, it says transform position and again we're still moving it forward. So just to kind of go back over it one more time, see how it works. We've got our laser emitter and our project projectile pool. When we start the game, we have these projectiles that populate here. And now our laser emitter, when we fire, is pulling from the pool and enabling it. Actually, it's not even pulling from it. It's, just, it's saying, hey, this pool object, create it here and enable it. And that is how you implement projectile pools.